Hey guys, RC Anime here. So who do you think is the most important when it comes to the making of an anime? The director, the writer, the studio? All of them certainly have their roles in anime making, but we always seem to forget about a crucial element to the team. The animators. We never really talk about them, even if they're the ones who give life to the shows and films we love. And contrary to what many people think, directors aren't always fully responsible in how animation moves and feels. Sure, they may hand down ideas and proposals, but in the end it's up to the animators in deciding how it will look. The industry standard way to do it is to lay out your key poses, like one, two, three, four and you draw the in-between drawings until the motion looks smooth enough. Generally, the most the director ever really contributes to the visual design of an anime is a storyboard, with notes on how long a cut would last or what kind of shots they want to use. And if they're ever particularly interested in seeking out a specific style, they'll seek animators who specialize in those styles. So who are some of these unsung creators, and what influences do they have on the look of an anime? Let's start in 1958, before anime even looked like anime. If you want the names of these anime and their key animators, click the CC button. Her name was Pai Nyang, with smooth black hair. This is Panda and the Magic Serpent, by Toei Animation. As you can see, it's very reminiscent to the aesthetics of a Disney animation flick, with fluid full animation at 24 frames per second. Today, anime runs on 24 FPS with character animations at 8 to 12 frames per second and background animations at 6 to 8. This change was due to the rise of television anime where the most cost efficient way was to produce an anime while it was airing. This results in time constraints, causing TV animation to be normally more choppy than film. As seen in the very first television anime ever, Astro Boy. Where we see the first signs of animators using shortcuts with mostly still images and little animation for whenever the characters move. This of course got better by Samurai Giants in 1973 and then got real good by Space Dandy in 2014. And that is because of Sakuga. Sakuga is the moment in anime in which animation quality improves drastically, enhancing the drama or the action of a scene, otherwise known as the money shot. Shows today still have stilted moments for the less important scenes, but when something big happens, the quality bumps up. These are the times where directors go to specific animators. People such as Yasuo Otsuka, basically the father of this concept who worked on Ho's Prince of the Sun, with now other renowned names such as Hayao Miyazaki and Mamura Oshii. Ho's was essentially the beginning of the progressive era for anime, implementing different altruistic styles from different animators. And today there's a whole wider range of different styles certain animators master in. You could have old fashioned realism with guys like Hiroyuki Okiura, who animates in ways that are less flashy but more ultra realistic. You may have seen his work in the Cowboy Bebop movie, Metropolis, or more recently when Marnie was there. By the way, this is one of the guys that changed the entire playing field of animation with Akira. This would soon lead to the rise of one of the most famous animators, Mitsuo Iso. Iso reinvented the idea of realism in anime, making the movements of his objects and characters more unpredictable and free. Delivering the same meticulous quality of Okiura, but with less jaggedness in the object's movement. In the end, resulting in something theatrical. Iso has made such a name for himself, he even animated a scene from Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill. Of course, animation isn't all about looking real either, and there are many animators who try to look surreal. From present day stuff like Ping Pong the Animation, to 1985's Bobby's in Deep. Surrealist animators have always been around for a long time, and there seems to be two kinds. One tends to keep their surrealistic elements more subtle, like Koji Morimoto and Shinya Ohira, while the other kind likes to go all out like Shinji Hashimoto and Masaki Yuasa. There's pros to this too, as it can be really effective for some wacky shows and build a more unique atmosphere, though this kind of style isn't exactly used too much, as it only really fits for specific cases. Cases that could include moments where your character gets really high on drugs, or if you really just want to make no sense. 
The more subtle approach has always been more popular, however, growing into a kind of style that fits in between realism and surrealism. A sort of middle ground. These animators usually have specific talents that make them stand out in their own ways, like Hironori Tanaka, one of my personal favorites whom is able to both match the styles of Shinya Ohira and Masaki Yuasa, while also being able to keep a more grounded and realistic aesthetic. It's also probably because of him that Megumi Kono exists. Like Tanaka, Kono is distinctive for how she animates wavy hair and body movements, and she's also the person responsible for Idolmaster's dance scenes not being in CG like some other shows. Tanaka has also influenced numerous other animators including Genichiro Abe and Takehiro Sakazume. Then there's Nozomu Abe who's famous for his kinetic action scenes, Yo Yoshinari, popular for his exaggerated cartoony animation, and Takeshiki Koike who spent 7 years animating this. So this is Sakuga, that moment where an anime surprises us with a jump in visual quality. The chance where animators have their time to shine through being auteurs. The art of the animators. And knowing this is important not just because they're the guys who animate what we watch, but because like directing, there's a voice and talent behind the animation styles we're watching. We know that Kill a Kill is intentionally absurd due to its overblown animation and art style, and that Zanki no Terror is more serious with its darker and realistic animation tones. This is all a part of presentation, and presentation is one of the most important features of an anime. It's a portal that eases us into the world of the story and the characters. Because no matter how great your story may be, with dull direction and display, it's gonna end up feeling flat. After all, it's not like you're reading a book. You're watching an anime.